Good morning. Welcome to Unity Baptist Church. It's great to have you here this morning. Glad you came out to worship with us. They're talking about rain around noon today, so I'm going to preach an extra hour um, so that you won't get wet, okay? So if you brought an umbrella, then you can leave at noon. Otherwise, you can stay till I get done. No, I'm just kidding. I could preach that long, but I wouldn't have anybody left but me and my son because I wouldn't allow him to leave, so... Uh, if you have a bulletin, there are some announcements in your bulletin. I do have a couple of things that I need to, to change. Um, under Sunday schedule, uh, nursing home service is at Brookstone today, but that is at 2 o'clock, not 3.30. Brookstone's at 2 o'clock, not 3.30. Uh, that didn't get changed to that this week. So 2 o'clock is the nursing home service, so those of you that are involved in that will be at Brookstone at 2 o'clock. And then make you aware, building committee, last Sunday night we voted for a new nine-member building committee. Uh, that will begin looking at renovations, expansion of this building, and you are going to meet at three o'clock this afternoon. Be a very won't, won't be a very long meeting, but we need to select a chairperson, secretary, and kind of get moving forward that. So this was the Sunday to do that. So if you can be here at three, shouldn't be longer than thirty to forty-five minutes, in case knowing what your schedule is. So building committee will meet at three. We will meet in the pastor's office. Okay, we will meet in the pastor's office. So. Um, and then there's one other correction that I need to call your attention to. Inside your bulletin, there's an, an insert, Workers Needed for Teen Kid. And it talks about what you can do and the opportunities that are available. We'd love to have all of you involved in some area of our Teen Kid ministry, which is on, which is on Wednesday nights, uh, starting again in September. And so there is going to be a Teen Kid meeting. Right down at the bottom it says we'll have a Teen, teen Kid meeting after church in the fellowship hall. And that is next Sunday morning, which is August the 30th. So it's next Sunday morning, August the 30th, we'll have a Team Kid meeting. So if you're not sure about working in Team Kid, then next Sunday morning plan on staying afterwards in the fellowship hall, and you'll get a chance to hear what you can do, how you can be involved. And if you have any questions, Patty Edwards is our Team Kid coordinator for this next year. Uh, her phone number is there in the bulletin, so call her. Also, if you are involved in Sunday school, adult Sunday school, we have our class list out for the uh, new Sunday school year, which will start in September. Uh, I just noticed coming in that I think all the ones are gone from over here, so you may have to walk over here and pick up one. Uh, but it, where, wherever you are in Sunday school, it'll have you listed, and that'll start in two weeks, the first Sunday in September, which is September the 6th. And then Ramsey Women's Conference, ladies, do not forget that this is the day to sign up for that. Uh, make sure that you do that today. If you have any questions, you can contact Jennifer Ellis. And then if you look on the back of your bulletin, I explained the uh, request that we've gotten from St. Elmo, First Baptist Church, St. Elmo, about helping with their ministry. They're struggling over there. If you are interested in serving in that capacity or would like to be involved in it in some way, shape, or form, the sign-up sheet for that is on the table here in the back of the sanctuary. So there's just one sign-up sheet right here in the back of the sanctuary. Make sure you sign up for that. Uh, this morning if you are interested in being a part of that mission. All right, Michelle, do you want to talk about the... Okay, remind you that um, we are developing a family, church family picture board, and so if you have time immediately following the worship service this morning, have your picture made in the fellowship hall. Uh, we're going to do that every Sunday for the next few Sundays. So if you, did, if you got your picture made last week, we don't want to make your picture again. Okay, we don't need it again. Now, you may like what you're wearing better today than what you had on last Sunday, but still, we've got a picture of you. We, you don't need to do it again. But if you didn't get your picture made, jump in there if you've got time and get your picture made so that we can get this done in the, over the next few weeks and get those pictures posted. All right, any other announcements? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all sign up for the uh, Cowboy Roundup. It's September the 12th. The menu and all, everything you need to know about it is out in both foyers. And next Sunday, if you don't sign up today, next Sunday we're going to have people with lassos to lasso you and get you signed up. So if you don't want to be embarrassed, better do it today. We'll also have people with lasso signing you up for Team Kid as well next Sunday. <laughs> hey, if it works for one, let's, work, let's use it for all of them. All right. Any other announcements? All right. 
You ready? Are you ready? Children's Church, kindergarten, first, second, and third graders can go out at this time. As they're headed out, we want you to stand and welcome people around you. If you see a visitor, surround them and thank them for being here this morning.
ask our ushers, if they will, to stand up, and we're going to worship with our tithes and our offerings, giving back a portion of what God has blessed us with. And Steve Zimmerman is going to come and lead us in our offertory prayer. Dear Lord, we just uh, thank you for this opportunity to come and worship in your house this morning and just be with each of us as we go out from here that we remember that you are the most important thing and we need to share that in each and every moment of our life. Lord, just uh, as we come to this time of tithes and offerings that we, we uh, pray that this will be used to the uplifting of your kingdom, Lord, and we just thank you for all you do. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Susan and Pam. Let's go, Lord, in a time of prayer, preparing our hearts and our minds for our worship time together. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, at the end of what we call the Beatitudes, the blesseds, the way we're supposed to live our lives in this world, you said this, Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Lord Jesus, we are the only faith, the only religion, if you want to use that word, the only relationship with God where we are encouraged to be persecuted, where we are encouraged to be insulted, where we are encouraged to turn the other's cheek, to pray for those who persecute us, or to pray for our enemies, to love those who are unlovable. Lord, Lord we're the only faith that teaches that. Because, Lord Jesus, that's who you were. And we're not a religion, and we're not a belief, but we are a relationship with you, Lord Jesus. And we are to become like you, we are to be you to the world. And, Lord, how will the world know who you are unless we look like you? So, Lord, yes, we should rejoice, we should feel blessed, we should be excited when people notice enough difference in us enough separation from the thinking and the attitudes and the actions of this world to be aware of it, to persecute us, to be aware of it, to insult us and to make fun of us because we do not live like everyone else. We are different. We are called to love. We are called to help. We are called to serve. We are called 
to tell others about you, Lord Jesus. And that is different. So Lord, help us be excited to be insulted and persecuted. Help us to feel blessed when people make fun of us because they did the same to you. And we should want to be just like you. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Let's stand together and sing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
singing about is that I just feel like we could just go home. It was wonderful. Michelle does such a good job of picking out the music that leads us to the throne of God. Sometimes we complain about the music. Maybe it's too loud or it's too fast. Or I had a hard time getting my tongue wrapped around my dentures <laughs> in, in that one song, Michelle. But you know, when Jean and I leave in just a few weeks to go to Georgia, we're going to miss you. But we'll be praying for this church that it might truly be a church of unity. And this morning we've sung upbeat songs, we've sung praise songs, we've done it all, and now we're going to sing a really old song. Old, old song, isn't it, Brad? But it's one that you will love. And uh, I think uh, this is what was sung at my grandpa's funeral back in 1944. I was a little girl then, but uh, still are. This, oh, thank you. <laughs> These two don't need an introduction, but I'm going to say it for the radio people. It's Brad Fryer and Ginger Wells. I didn't even know we were on the radio. <laughs> Oh. 
Amen. Thank you, Brad and Ginger. You know, sometimes we fall into habits that are not seemingly bad, but we just kind of we kind of get in a rut. I mean, have have any of you ever been in a rut? You know, doing the same. You know, do you know what the old saying is? A rut is a grave with the ends knocked out. That's the old saying. That a, the, a rut is a grave with the ends knocked out. I, it's not always good to be in a rut. Now, there's some things that are good to do over and over and over again if it's if it's beneficial. I mean, I hope you're in a I hope you're in a rut of Bible study and prayer every day. In other words, I hope that you study the Bible and that you pray every day. Now, I hope you're not in a rut with that. In other words, I hope it's changing and growing and progressing and developing. So, I mean, there, there needs to be change in that, but it's something that is, it's, in, it's good for us to do every day. But sometimes as Christians, we get trapped into a certain mindset, a certain way of doing things, and we lose focus of what we're really supposed to be doing. Sometimes it's about comfort. Sometimes it's about um, what we like, our likes and our dislikes. Sometimes it's, it's just easier to fake it than to be real. And, and I really believe that a lot of people in our churches today are faking their relationship with Jesus instead of being real in it. Because it, it, really, it really is easy to fake it. I mean, what, we see each other um, on Sunday morning for about an hour or two? So, I, I mean, and then a lot, of us, a lot of us don't see each other throughout the week. I mean, we don't run into each other. We don't see what's going on. So it, it would be really easy to put on nice clothes, uh, to get our Bibles all dusted off and spiffed up, and, and to show up for an hour or two on Sunday morning and, and be this wonderful uh, Christian person and then go home, and the rest of the week we can kind of do what we want to. Now, most of you know I'm from Alabama. And so the South is part of who I am. And my mom was a great fan of, uh, of a Southern comedian named Jerry Clower. You know I mean, and, and just, if you, you know, I, the first time I ever told a Jerry Clower story up here, there were people who came to me, I've never heard of him. And I thought, really? What? I mean, Jerry, Jerry was a guy who, he actually was a salesman for the Mississippi Chemical Corporation. He went out and sold fertilizer, fertilizer seed, those type of things. And, and that, was, that was his job. But he had a gift for gab. And when he would go to talk, you know, salesmen a lot of times have a lot of hot air. Um, if you've ever been around any salesmen, and good ones do. And so he would always tell a story. He'd always share a story with whoever he was visiting with. And, and someone one day finally said, Jerry, you really... can." can I have you come to an event and, and, and just share some of your stories? And that's how it started. I mean, just someone asked him to come to a, a meeting, an event, and he began sharing his stories, and then someone asked him to... And eventually he quit the Mississippi Chemical Corporation, and he be, began doing that full-time. And he made records. That's records. Uh, that's these black things that spin around on a turntable. Uh, you younger generation, you don't know what a record is. Uh, uh, you, it's, not a C, it's kind of a big CD. Uh, that'd be the easiest, the, no mp3s, no that. but he made records and tapes, and he appeared live everywhere, I mean, and, and he was, he was a great storyteller, he was also a great Christian man, and, and he lived his Christianity well, uh, and so, you know, he just, he was just funny, and he tells a story, and this was kind of later on in his, uh, at, I don't know, I don't know if any of these stories were true, by the way, uh, the Ledbetters were real, but I don't know that they were, everything that happened with them was real. But because Jerry would like to um, embellish a little bit. But he, t he tells a story about a, a professor of geology. There was an a independent uh, oil company down in southern Mississippi, because they've got oil wells off the coast of Mississippi. Uh, and then there was a, an independent company down there who brought this professor of geology in to talk about the benefits of drilling and, and the benefits of oil and, and, and all this kind of stuff. And he gave a wonderful, wonderful uh, presentation to their annual meeting. And they were just excited. And they said, you know what? This guy is so good. We need to hire him away from the university where he works. And we need to send him out across, across the southern part of the state, across southeast. 
and have him tell people. Go to, go to colleges and universities, uh, uh, events, and tell them about what we're doing and how, how the oil industry benefits. Now, again, this was a long time ago, so some of you may not like the oil industry now. But So they hired this professor, and he began going around. They hired him. They paid him really well. Uh, they even hired a chauffeur. They had a chauffeur and a driver, a, a driver and a car for him to go wherever he went. And so this driver would take him to all of these events. And he would speak at big colleges, small colleges, and, and he just traveled around with this chauffeur, chauffeur giving this presentation to encourage you know, the pe people to get into the oil business, to get into geology and those type of things. And it was going wonderful. It was a huge success. And the chauffeur would always travel with him, and he would a lot of times would sit in the back of the room and listen to the presentation each time. And so he had heard it over and over and over. I mean, he knew it. He, he had memorized it. He knew exactly the pauses and everything. he says I you know I, he, I've heard it over and over again and one day he's driving down the road and the chauffeur looks in the mirror and looks at the professor in the back and he says you know it's really not this world's not fair professor and the professor says what do you mean he says you are out there making this same presentation it's the exact same presentation everywhere you go you're saying it over and over again and you're getting rich off this they're paying you really good and I'm driving you to all these things and I'm making nothing I mean I'm barely getting by and he says and I know the presentation as well as you do matter of fact he says I can do it better than you can I've heard you give it enough that I can I can give the exact same speech the exact same presentation I can deliver it and do it better than you and it's just not fair and the professor says, well, you know, I have a BS in this, and I have an... He says, I don't, I don't want to hear about that. He says, yeah, all you're doing right now is getting paid to give a speech, and I can do it better than you. The professor said, okay, all right. The next university, we're, going, we're on, on our way to a university, a major university here in the South. No one there knows me. No one's on staff there that knows me. They've never met me before. They've never seen me. Now, people, you'd go, well, how would they not recognize him from his Facebook page? Uh, people, there was no Facebook or Internet back then. They couldn't Google him and say, well, there's his picture. I, so they had, to, they, they had no picture of him. They, didn't know, they just knew this professor was coming to give this presentation from this oil company. He says, so nobody knows me here. So let, here's, here's what I'll tell you what we'll do. We're about the same size. And so we'll go pull up here. There's a rest area up here. Let's pull up. Let's go in. We'll, we'll switch clothes. You'll put on my suit and tie. I'll put on your chauffeur's outfit and your chauffeur's cap and everything. And, and we'll just, we'll, I'll show you. Well, I'll, I'll see if you can shut corn or not, is the way Jerry Clower put it. You know, I, let's see if you can do it. He says, but I'm, and I'm going to watch you fail miserably. So they did it. They switched, they switched outfits. The, the professor got in the front and began driving, and the chauffeur got in the back with his suit on and, and ready to go give the presentation. They drove up to this major university, and they, they went into this huge athletic center, and there was 22,000 people in there. And so the professor, who's not the professor, the chauffeur, gets up to deliver this, but they all think he's the professor. And as he gets ready to begin the speech, deliver the presentation, he looks way in the back of the room, and there is the chauffeur, who's actually the professor, sitting there watching and listening, just waiting for him to mess up. And so the chauffeur begins, and he gives the, he gives the presentation exactly like the professor, actually better than the professor. His delivery was better, his timing was better. I mean, he did a superb job. And, and Jerry Clower says it this way. He said he did, they, he did so well that they were shouting and wallering in the floor. They were so excited about the presentation that he did. That's a southern expression, wallering in the floor. Like a pig in the mud, they were wallering in the floor. And they were just, I mean, they were hooping and hollering. Wow, what are, he just, that, they were so excited. They were so enamored with the presentation that had been given. And so the chauffeur's up there really smug and, and looking, looking back at the professor sitting in the back like, ha, huh, see? Well, the president of the university gets everybody calmed down. He says, well, um, we actually, this actually went a little quicker than we expected it to go. So we have about 10 minutes extra before you have to go to your next class. So is there anyone here who would like to ask any questions of the professor? Now, remember, he is a professor of geology and oil and all of those type of things. He knows about the layers of the earth and, and when the dinosaurs went extinct and began to all this kind of stuff. So they say, anybody have any questions? And a young man about halfway back stood up, and Jerry Clower says, you know the type. He had a, a load of books under his arm. He had horn rim glasses on. 
and he stood up and he was one of those eggheads, was the term that Jerry Clower uses. One of those really smart guys, and I'd like to show how smart he was by the questions that he would ask and the answers that he would give and, and when he was in class. And so he stands up and he says, Professor, about two billion years ago when the dinosaurs went extinct, if a dinosaur's carcass was was trapped into the mud and, and layers of the Earth's stratosphere built up above it and after two billion years if a drill on an oil rig drilled down and penetrated that carcass at a depth of 5,987 feet then my question to you is what would be the acidity, the pH of the soil, and what would be the stratosphere in which the dinosaur's carcass was located? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> so you can imagine the chauffeur standing there has no clue what the answer is. But Jerry Clower says that the chauffeur was actually a very quick on his feet, um, very nimble with his mind and so he looked down at that young man from the podium and he said young man sir I am surprised that they would allow someone with as little knowledge and intelligence as you to be a part of this wonderful magnificent university so, sir you aren't even qualified to be here that question is so simple so easy to answer that I just, I, to demonstrate how easy it is, my chauffeur is sitting in the back of the room. Would you stand up and please answer that question? <laughs> now, other than being funny, what was the purpose of that? Sometimes I think we present our Christianity as a performance, but not a truth. I think sometimes we are Christians in our, on our own Sundays only, and it's an act, it's a performance, and we do great. We know the songs to sing in church. We know where to find the book of the Bible when, when we go there. We, we know how to speak Christianese when we're in church, and, and we're, we're good at the performance. But when the questions come, because we don't have a relationship with God and it's not a daily walk and it's not a daily thing that we do, we struggle with what do I say, what do I do? And so we tend to put ourselves in places where we will not be asked questions about our faith. Most surveys of churches evangelical churches throughout the years have suggested that less than 10% of people who attend church regularly ever share their faith. They ever talk about Jesus. And people have always questioned, why is that? What, what's there? And there's a lot of reasons why that might be, but I think the real reason um, is that our faith is not real. It, it, we, we have no depth. We, we're afraid to go out and share our faith because we're afraid that person will look at us and they'll go, Wait a minute, you're, you're a Christian? Ha, I didn't know that. You're a Christian. I think a lot of people don't talk about Jesus out in the world because they know they don't look anything like him, they don't act anything like him, and therefore they're embarrassed to ever be a witness for him. They're like the chauffeur. He, he can't answer the question when it's asked because his faith is not real. His knowledge is not real. And I want us to look at a passive scripture in, in Mark chapter 4 this morning in Jesus' teachings here where he talks about his kingdom and he talks about our faith and what it is supposed to be. Mark chapter 4, we're going to begin in verse 21. And he, Jesus, this, Jesus has just told the parable of the sower the seed being sowed, and, and that we're to go out. We are the sower. We're to go out and sow the seed, the word of God, into the world. And it says, And he was saying to them, A lamp is not brought to be put under a basket. Is it? 
or under a bed? Is it not brought to be put on a lampstand? For nothing is hidden except to be revealed, and nothing, nor has anything been secret, but that it would come to light. If anyone has ears, let him to hear, let him hear. And he was saying to them, Take care what you listen to. By your standard of measure, it will be measured to you, and more will be given to you besides. For whoever has to him more shall be given, and whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away. Jesus said, if, if, if we're believers, it's like a lamp. If, if, if I'm going to... If I'm going to light a lamp, if I'm going to turn on a light, I'm not going to immediately turn around and put it under a bushel basket, hide it under a bushel, oh no, I'm going to let it shine. This is the light of mine. We used to sing that. We don't, we don't let the light, why, why turn it on if we're going to hide it? She says, you don't light a light and then put it in a basket or covered up or hide it you you put it on a lampstand you put it up high for for everyone to be able to see but we don't do that many times in our relationship with him why because we have things that we want to keep hidden but he he says there he says for nothing is hidden except to be revealed Many of us do not live our Christian walk in our daily lives because we have things that we're hiding that we do not want to be revealed. And we know that the closer we walk with God, the more we're around Jesus, the more He's going to bring the stuff out that we don't like. The more He's going to reveal to us the things in our lives that are sin and unpleasant in order to change us. It's, it's not because he's mad at us. It's not because he wants to punish us. But he knows that those things are not good for us. And so he, light comes into us to reveal what is not of God so it can be removed from us. Because he says there, take care what you listen to. By your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Take care what you're listening to. You know, people um, sometimes get upset with me uh, because I tend to tell you what I think's right. You know, I, and, and, and people don't want to hear that. Um, we live in a world today where everything is available. Everything is available. You can, matter of fact, uh, that story from Jerry Clower, you know, I had remembered it uh, pretty well through the years, but I, this morning I was thinking... Uh, you know, I, I might want to check that and make sure I've got everything right. So what I do, typed it in to the internet, came up on YouTube. It was just an audio of it from one of his albums, but pulled it up, played it, got to hear the whole story again in Jerry Clower's voice. I mean, everything is available to us. So I can go out and look and listen to anything I want to. And what have we done as Christians? Have we guarded what we listen to? Have we guarded what we watch? What we watch? You know, I can remember as a child, if I wanted to look at pornography, as a young man, I had to go to a store, and only certain stores would you find them. I had to go to a store, and you had to go to a certain place. Many times it was behind the counter, and you would have, not that I ever did this, people, get off me. I'm not saying I didn't want to do it. We all struggle with things. I'm not saying I didn't want to do it, but I didn't do it. But you had to go to a store, you had to go up to the counter, you had to ask for that magazine back there, and you had to prove you were of a certain age before you could buy that magazine. That's the way it was when I'm growing up. Now all you got to do is pull out this. It's big, big in the news this week that um, the website Ashley Madison has been hacked. Some of you are going to be going, what's Ashley Madison? What's well, a website where you can go out and arrange to have affairs? People, this is the day and age that we're living in. This is the, the generation that we're living in. And, and, and people are freaking out because Ashley Madison has been hacked because their name, they have, a, they have a, an account there where you can go in. And again, haven't been there, people, so don't give me that. But as I understand it, you go in and you register your email and you set up a profile and they will match you with someone who wants to have an affair. These are for married men who want to have affairs. Okay? I, it's there. It's available. 
We can, we can put anything we want in our minds nowadays. And Jesus is saying, be careful what you listen to. If he was standing before you today, he would say, be careful what you pull up on the internet, what you watch on TV, what you listen to on the radio. I can remember when the word damn was never said on the radio. And now everything's said on the radio. I can remember when cursing never happened on TV. And now, my goodness, wow, anything can be said on TV. This week, someone asked me, they said, you don't have cable or satellite? I said, nope. I'm 50 years old, and I've never had cable or satellite. Why not? Well, there ain't much on there I'm worth, that's worth paying for. Sorry, that's my opinion. If you have cable or satellite, it doesn't mean you're going to hell or anything like that. Um, but I don't want to pay 60 or 70, 80 or 90 bucks for the crap that's on there. Just, I'm just telling you, there's nothing on there that's worth, worth watching. For most of us, and if we're honest, most of us say, but oh, I love that show, or I love this show, or I like to go to the internet and watch this, or do this, or be involved in this. What are you putting in your minds? Jesus would say, what are you listening to? What are you looking up on the internet? What are you watching on TV? Are we living our faith daily, or is it just a Sunday morning thing? And, 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 if I, and if it's just a Sunday morning thing, then I'm not going to go out and tell people about Jesus. Why would I? They would laugh at me. There's a story in, in the uh, uh, New Testament over in Acts where a, a man is trying to cast out demons in the name of Jesus, and he wasn't a follower of Jesus. And, and he, and he, said, he tell, talks to the man that's possessed of these demons he says, in the name of, in the name of Jesus, who, whom Paul preaches, I, I command you to come out. And the, the demons speak to him through the man, and they said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And he gets beat up. We don't tell people about Jesus because what we're listening to, what we're looking at, what we're putting into our lives doesn't honor him, doesn't speak of a relationship with him. And therefore, we won't be a witness for him. Because we know it'd be a fake. What we do is we ask for the chauffeur in the back of the room to stand up and ask the question. Hey, hey, pastor, can you go talk to this person? I think they're lost. Well, why don't you talk to them? Well, I don't know what to say. Well, I don't know what answers. I don't, he might ask me questions I don't know the answers to. Well, I, no, the tr just speak the truth. I, I don't want to go talk to him about Jesus because... I've said some things and I've done some things around him and, and he knows I'm not. He would be surprised if I said I was a Christian. Jesus said, whoever has to him more shall be given. And whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away. See, look at that. Look at that passage right there. If I'm growing in my faith, if I'm, I'm spending time with Jesus, then he's going to continue to pour himself into me. This is not about physical possessions, people. This is not about money, material things. This is, this is about if I'm walking with Jesus and I'm growing in him, he's going to continue to pour himself into me where I'm going to be different. I'm going to be unusual. I'm going to be worthy of persecution because I look different from the rest of the world. But if I don't... If I don't grow in my faith, he's going to take what I have away. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to lose your salvation. But if you're not willing to grow in your faith, are you really saved? Why, why would we become a believer in Jesus and never grow in our faith? Have, have any of you ever joined a club and then never participated in it? We all have, probably. Joined something... You know, somebody says, hey, why don't you come be a part of this? And you join it, and you get involved in it, and you go, ah, this isn't for me, and, and you kind of just stop going. And people, hey, why don't you come join us again? Ah, well, ah, no, I, you, know. you, you shouldn't have joined in the first place. It just wasn't what you were interested in. And so eventually your membership just lapses, or your membership disappears, or you, you ask to be removed from membership, whatever the case may be. But if you really love what they're doing... You're there every time that you can be there. 
You're excited about what they're doing. If we really love Jesus, then we're going to be involved in the work that He's doing. We're going to want to be around other believers, around other members of the body of Christ. We're going to want to be encouraged, and we're going to go out and grow in our faith and and be a part of Bible studies and be a part of ministries and be a part of witnessing for Jesus if it's real. But if if it's just a fake... If we're just like the chauffeur standing there on the stage spouting what we learned by memory but not having lived it, then are we really a part of it? That chauffeur, he didn't know anything about geology. But he talked a good talk. There are a lot of people that are members of our churches and sitting in our pews on Sunday morning who know nothing about Jesus Christ and being in a real relationship with him, but they can talk a good game for an hour on Sunday morning. Matter of fact, they don't even have to talk much. If you time it just right, you can slip in right at the last minute, and as soon as the pastor is finished, as we start to pray at the end, you can slip out, and you really don't even have to fake it very long. You really don't. You know, and when, when in, the time, in the shake and howdy time, when people come around and greet you, all you got to say, hey, good to see you. Because they're not going to ask you in that brief three to four minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, however long it is. It's longer for some of you than it is others. Um, Y'all will get that later. Um, They're not going to ask you, hey, how's your walk with Jesus this week been? How's your Bible statement? Did you make it to discipleship group this week? Did you you talk to anybody about Jesus this week? They're not going to ask you that in the brief five minutes that we have to shake hands here. So you can slip in, slip out. Man, you really don't have to fake it too much. As long as you can keep yourself off your iPhone so that you're not looking at what people are doing on Facebook or stay off YouTube for the the length of the sermon, man, you got it made. Because nobody can look over your shoulder and say, yo, you're friends with that person? Or or you watch that? You're following that? You've subscribed to that? Whatever you do. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not subscribed to anything. I'm not a part of anything. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kind of boring in that respect. Um, But Jesus said, what are you listening to? What are you putting into yourself? Verse 26, and he was saying, the kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. And he goes to bed at night and he gets up by day and and the seed sprouts and, and grows and how he himself does not know. The soil produces crops by itself, first the blade and then the head and then the mature grain and the in the head. But when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. People, We're all sowing seeds, all of us, every one of us in here. We are sowing seeds. We're just like that farmer. And we don't don't understand, most of us are not um, agronomists. We don't understand exactly how it all happens. We might be able to talk the talk and talk about germination and the right amounts of water and moisture and oxygen and actually carbon dioxide and, and fertilizer and all those kind of things. We might be able to talk that talk a little bit. But we don't know how it happens. We don't have a clue. God does it. He makes that seed sprout. And I tell you what, whatever seed you cast out there, that's what's going to come up. If you sow corn looking for soybeans, it ain't going to happen. Man, I really wanted soybeans to come up in that field this year. Boy, I just, I was hoping. I, soybean prices are up. I don't know where prices are, by the way, so I'm just, it's just rhetorical. Uh, Figurative, guessing. Soybean prices are up. I, I need more soybeans this year. So I hope soybeans comes up over in that field. What'd you sow? Corn? Guess what? You know what's going to come up over there? Corn. You know, if you sow fescue seed in your yard, fescue's going to come up. You're not going to get Bermuda. You're not going to get zoysia. You're not going to get ryegrass. If you sow fescue, you're going to get fescue, plus some weeds thrown in there. You know, the one thing that you never have to sow it, sow so but always comes up is crabgrass i've never sown a crabgrass seed but i got crabgrass in my yard isn't it amazing somebody's sowing crabgrass every year it it shows up every year just like magic yeah people we're sowing seeds but what kind of seeds are we sowing what are we what is our witness because our witness Who we are, how we act, what we look like, that is the seed that we're sowing in this world. 
What do we look like? I, I said this a few, I don't know if it was in Sunday school or worship service a few Sundays ago, but it, you know, it's, a, it's a shame when you talk to someone and you're saying, hey, I know, how, do you know so-and-so? Oh, yeah, I know them. I said, yeah, they're, they're a member of our church. <laughs> really? They're a member of your church? What kind of witness do they have? You, you kind of figure it out pretty quick. Uh, people, we're sowing seeds with our actions. We're sowing seeds with our words. We're sowing seeds by what we listen to, by what we watch, by what we're involved in on the internet. We're sowing seeds. Why are we shocked when crabgrass comes up when we're sowing crabgrass seeds? Why are we shocked when corn comes up when we sowed corn seed? Why are we shocked? Um, God wants us to have a harvest of people who are followers of Him. Which means we, His people, have to sow those seeds. It shouldn't be a surprise... It shouldn't be a surprise when you tell people you're a Christian. And people, I'm not talking about perfection here because there are no perfect people. Uh, none of us are perfect. I'm talking about ninety percent of our time. What are we doing? How are we living? Christianity is not a set of rules and regulations. It's a relationship with Jesus. And in that relationship, He is pouring Himself into us if we allow it so that we become more and more and more like Him. Not, not so we can't have fun. Not so that we can't... When that, I guess that's it, isn't it? A lot of us don't live our Christian life because we don't think it's fun. Christians are boring. Christians are stuck in the mud. Christians are goody two shoes. Christians are blah, bland, blah. Right? Isn't that, isn't that what we, isn't what, why, why can't Christians have fun? Well, we can. We just don't have to get drunk to do it. We can. We don't have to have an affair to do it. We, we can. We don't have to use words that sailors don't use to do it. Yeah. We, not, I'm not talking about me. I'm not a fun person, okay? Um, but all you other Christians, you good Christians who have fun. Um, I, I'm boring. Per, I'm not a fun person. I get it, okay? I understand it. That has nothing to do with Christianity. It has to do with just me. What's fun for me is, is being unfun. Um, <laughs> somebody, somebody has to do it, you know. But it, who said Christianity wasn't fun? You know, you know what? People, we need to live our faith in such a way that it changes the world. I, I was talking to someone a couple of weeks ago, and, um, and, and I'm not picking on alcohol this morning. Please don't misunderstand that. Um, uh, the Bible teaches drunkenness is a sin. Too much alcohol, too much food, too much, too much of anything. But the Bible teaches moderation in everything. You can have too much of anything. Um, I, I even believe sometimes you can have too much church. We have people who are worshiping church instead of worshiping Jesus. So it's moderation in everything. So too much alcohol is a sin, not just drinking alcohol. Now, again, I don't drink because I can't get drunk if I never touch it. Okay, It's pretty easy not to get drunk if you don't ever drink it. It'd be a whole lot easier not to get fat if I didn't eat. At McDonald's or Wendy's or... yeah. I, McDonald's doesn't make you fat. Too much McDonald's makes you fat. Um, I, had, I was talking to a guy just a few weeks ago and um, just said something about... You know, we were together, and we were at a place where he could have a beer or whatever, and, um, and he, 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 he doesn't. And I know that he drinks. And, and I said, hey, you're not going to offend me. Hey, Donnie, you're not going to offend... Oh, no, it wasn't Donnie. <laughs> I said, hey, you're not going to offend me if you have one beer. 
said, I don't drink, but you know, and you de definitely shouldn't get drunk, and, but you're not going to offend me if you have one beer. And, and you know what he told me? He says, well, I've grown up enough to realize that I like to remember what, ha what I did the next day. He said, I've grown up enough in my life, I've matured enough in my life that I want to actually remember the good time I had th tonight the next day. And, and that's a maturing thing. And it's, this person's a Christian, and again, growing in their faith. It, that's a maturing thing. And, and Jesus said, we're, he's going to change us, and we are going to be salt in the world, and we're going to be light in the world. Uh, we, he says in Matthew five sixteen, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. People, it's harder today than ever before to live our faith. Because there are so many things to pull us away. There are so many things to distract us. There are so many things to, to bog us down. So it is. It is so much harder today than, than ever before. But just because it's harder doesn't mean we shouldn't be doing it. And so I want to encourage you this morning... We're, we're not going to have an invitation time this morning. Um, I'm going to encur I want to encourage you this morning to make a commitment. All of you, all of us, you, I, I'm sorry, all of us, because I need to make the same commitment. For all of us to make this commitment this morning that I'm going to take something out of my life this week that's not of God. And doesn't benefit him. And I don't know what that may be. That may be something to do with the internet. That may have something to do with uh, what, how you spend your time. Uh, what you read. I mean there, there's so many things it could be. But, but pick one thing. One thing. That takes up your time. That's not of God. And, and, and back off from it this week. And when you do that. Fill that time. With God. Maybe that's reading God's Word. Maybe that's going to a disciple group or a Bible study. Maybe that's spending some time in prayer. Maybe that's going out and, and helping someone or visiting someone you know has need. T take that, whatever it is, that you know is, is not... A, and it may not be a bad... It doesn't have to be a bad thing. It doesn't have to be a sinful thing. But everything in moderation. And, and, and spend that time with God. And, and I'll go ahead and tell you what I'm going to give up this week. It's not going to be golf. Because um, I'll be honest with you, I don't spend that much time playing golf this year. Uh, I've had too many other things going on. But I love to read. And I love to read Christian stuff, but I also love to read fiction. I like, to, I like science fiction. I like fantasy. I like mystery. I like, I like westerns. I, I love to read a lot of different genres. And so I like to read. And a lot of times Michelle will tell you that I'm sitting on the couch reading when I should be downstairs working on the basement, um, but, or mowing the grass, or washing the car. Or, I love to read. I've always loved to read. Uh, I've been that way since I could start reading when I was six years old. I've loved to read. Um, but that's, that's what I'm going to give up this week. Um, that, that, fi that stuff that, I, that is, again, not bad stuff necessarily, but it certainly isn't increasing my Christian walk. I'm going to give that up this week and spend that time either reading God's Word, reading Christian works, um, spending time with people. So um, that, I'll just tell you what mine's going to be this week. So I, you don't have to tell me yours. I don't need to know yours. Just make a commitment this week to take that basket that's covering your light of Jesus away this week so that your light can shine. Okay? And just, and just do it for this week. Okay? Give it one week and put some God in that place this week. Whatever it is, put some God in that place. And you may, you may say, well, I, I, can, I, can I spend time with other Christians? Sure, I don't care what you do, but put something of God in that place this week. And see, how you're, see what you're like end of next week. Because Jesus said... To those who have, I will give more. To those who have, I will give more. And I believe by the end of this week, maybe the end of two weeks, 
you're going to see a difference in your life because you spent more time with God and Jesus. Let me pray. Father, you, you, we are salt and we are light, you say in Matthew chapter 5. And salt has to have a saltiness. If it loses its taste, it's no benefit. It, salt has to be different from the thing that it is salting or it's not noticeable. We're light. Light comes into darkness. Light has to, has to shine in order to make a difference. We don't hide it under a basket. We don't place it in a hole. We don't put it in the cupboard. We, we put it out before on a lampstand before men so that the light will shine. We are light and are salt. Our lives should make a difference in the lives of those around us. People should see us and know that, that we belong to you, Lord Jesus, that we live for you, Lord Jesus, that we seek to be like you, Lord Jesus. And while they may, as it says later on in Matthew 5, while they may persecute us and make fun of us and insult us, when that time's come, when they're ready to change, they'll come to us and say, I want what you have. I want to know who you know, and we can introduce them to you, Lord Jesus. God, help us give up one thing this week and put more of you in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. Michelle's going to come and lead us in our closing chorus. I want to remind you that tonight our evening services are moved to Brownstown, to the Road Angels ministry over there. We're having our community prayer service. We haven't had those through the summer, and we're kicking them back off tonight. So we will take the bus... So we'll leave from here at the parking lot at 5.30 this afternoon heading over to Brownstown. So if you want to ride the bus, you can just meet us out here at 5.30 and we'll take you over. Michelle? All right. Let's sing Tree, Trees of the Fields. That's what the name of it is. All right.